Jeff Kober. What was your first car? I had a 47 Chevy that my grandfather uh, left behind, and it was never licensed, so my actual first highway car was a 64 Ford Galaxy 500, two-door hardtop, <laughs> white over blue. You knew that car well. 289, three on the tree. Oh my goodness. Was that in Wyoming? <laughs> Montana. Oh, Montana, right, right. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's, that's really impressive that you could just r rattle off that's, all those. It was my first car. car. Yeah. Man. <laughs> and how old were you then? 16. 16. Yeah. It, did, it, and that was given to you? Oh, God, no. I bought it. $750. $750. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I had to work for that one. You loved it? Uh, well, I did, except it had, the engine was too small. In, in Montana at that time, there was no daytime speed limit. Oh. So was 90 was the... The preferred speed? The preferred speed <laughs> for me. Yeah. I always, I was going nowhere fast uh. from a very early age. <laughs> I caught a little bit of the end of that because I lived in Utah, and I used to go up to Montana, and... I always thought that's survival of the fittest here. Like, <laughs> but they they leavened that with the fact that they only sold three point two beer. Mm. So, but you, they had drive through liquor stores too. Do you remember those? That maybe that was just Wyoming. That was Wyoming. Ah, no Montana. You had it you was guys a state so liquor store. Oh, it's just <laughs> terrible. What, I, what is three point two beer? It's like very little alcohol, so you end up <laughs> peeing more than being drunk. Oh, oh my God! You have to drink so much. That sounds terrible. It's three point two percent alcohol. Yeah, right. Like yeah. Less than wine. Way less than wine. Yes. They just really wanted to keep people sober. Uh, no. <laughs> they, uh, you had to go to the liquor store to get the real beer. Yeah, you had you you had to you drink hard store. liquor. Black uh, powder. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some yeah. states are still like that. Well, I am Laura Cathcart Robbins, and this is the only one in the room. But I am never the only one in this room because, as usual. My co-host, producer, and boyfriend, Scott Slaughter, who I call Hun, is here as well. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Mm, <laughs> it makes everybody laugh. <laughs> um, so, Hun, do you ever stop to think of how, about how it is... <laughs> Hun, do you ever stop to think about how it is that people are listening to us? You mean like in their car, or riding their bikes, or on a train? Right, or doing dishes, or while going on a run, or a hike. Yeah, that too. But I meant more like where they're finding us. You know how we always say, listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, uh, yeah, right. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, where do people get their podcasts? Uh, like uh, Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, you mean? Those types of platforms? Yeah. I mean, the vast majority of people get to us through Applecore Media. So shout out to Applecore Media. But what are some other ways? Uh, there's Overcast, CastBox. Uh, by the way, shout out to our homie, Ariel... Got to get this one. Got to practice that one. Nis and blop. No. It's like this and that. Yeah, this and that. Nis blop. Nis and blop. Shout out to our homie Ariel Nis and blop. And uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> we got to read that. I'll do that. I'll do her name. Yeah, please do. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> just let me shout her out. I just say there's Overcast and Cashbox. Um, there's Overcast and Castbox. Yeah, shout out to the homie Ariel Nis and blop. Ariel. Oh, and there's Pocket Cast. Pocket Cast. Yeah. Right. So there are actually over 47 ways, 47 ways what? to tune into the only one in the room. Thanks, as usual, to our prolific producer, Christina Barcy, who we call Barcy. Barcy. Um, who made sure that everyone would be able to get, blah, who made sure that everyone would be able to find us. Yeah, shout out to Barcy. What would we do without her? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So when you share this episode with your friends this week, you won't have to worry about how they're going to listen to us. Rest assured, we've got everyone covered. And now I'm going to introduce our guest for today. I'm so excited. Uh, Jeff Kober. He teaches Vedic meditation in his center. Sorry. Jeff Kober teaches Vedic meditation from his center in Studio City, as well as New York, Seattle, Chicago, Montana, Mexico City, Chihuahua, and India. As an actor, Jeff has appeared in many TV series. Recently, sorry. <laughs> My screen went blank. As an actor, Jeff has appeared in many TV series, recently reoccurring on NCIS, Los Angeles, Shameless, which we saw him on, um, The Walking Dead, Sons of Anarchy, which we also saw him on, and The New Girl, which you love. 
mm, and I many others. His series Big Dogs will be released shortly. Film work includes Leave No Trace, Sully, Beauty Mark, Tank Girl, and the upcoming topology of Sirens, Block Island, directed by Tony Glazer, and Lie Exposed, which he also wrote, and for which he did, oh, and for which he did Wet Col Collodion. Wet Plate Collodion. Wet Plate Collodion mm. Portrait Photography. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. um, his co-author and spouse, Adele Slaughter, maybe some relation to our own Scott Slaughter. It's speculated. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Jeff wrote Art That Pays, The Emerging Artist's Guide to Make a, Making a Living, a handbook that has been used in many college arts programs. For the past seven years, he has written a daily thought about meditation and consciousness, which he sends out to subscribers and which he is in the process of organizing into book form, which is so smart. And he is working on another book, The Mythology of Self, Discovering and Changing the oh. Stories We Tell Ourselves. Yes. That's, it has a new title now. Oh, what is it? The End of the Pain Factory. The End of the Pain Factory. I love that. <laughs> All right. And um, so, and then Wet Collodion. Tell me again what it is. Wet they are. Plate Collodion Wet Plate Collodion Photography. Yes. And it says Ambrotypes as well. Well, Ambrotypes right? are Wet Plate collodion on glass and tin okay. types or wet plate collodion on, on tin or metal metal yeah. it's okay. beautiful work by the way really thank beautiful you yeah, it's really amazing. yeah Thanks. um so welcome jeff thanks yeah. so much for having me oh welcome, my goodness jeff. we're so excited Thanks, to have you it's so weird that you're here because you know i start every day with a meditation from jeff oh yeah. and though i feel like you're channeling a message i always see you in the message <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which is I, I think i have over a thousand in a, a, a mailbox oh of, my of God. over meditations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've been doing it for probably seven or eight years now. We've been yeah. Yeah. on the Jeff Cover meditation mantra. It's been almost nine years now that yeah. I've been doing it. That you've been it. doing it's it? It's just silly. Well, it's an amazing um, service act that you do. And, um, you know, I think uh, bringing people into the light on a regular basis with humility is a really impressive. Oh, God bless you, man. I really yeah. appreciate that. Mm. It's changed the way I look at the world, by the way. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it really has. Well, and I, um, I was later to the game than Scotty was um, with everything. <laughs> with everything spiritual, I was later to the game. Um, but I, he started to share the meditations, your meditations with me, your mm -hmm. daily, your daily thoughts. Um, and you send them early enough in the morning that you can start your day with them with yeah. a meditation. Yeah. And so once, once I, I started really understanding that there was an, a, a positive impact when I sat down with them mm. and was able to shift um, how I went into the day, then I started doing it for myself and I started sharing it with people. Well, that's the only uh, parameter I set for myself is that if someone starts at the beginning and goes to the end that they'll feel better yes. at the end than they yeah. did at the beginning. Absolutely. And I mean, the other thing that I love about them is that I, I have I have a block or a, a prejudice I guess because I do I prejudge anything that smacks of organized religion mm, yeah and and sometimes I can get past that but initially I'll have a block and there, yours are just so accessible these these spiritual thoughts the stories that you put with them just allow me access right into it I, I don't have that same block and I know other people that do that now can access it as well. Well, there, there's a, a real strong differentiation to be made between uh, religion and spirituality. Sure. Mm -hmm. Religion tells you what the truth is, and spirituality uh, allows you to discover mm. what the truth is uh, on a on a moment to moment basis. Yeah. That's, that's and that, is that a Vedic thing? Is that the, well? I, I think that's just a truth thing. And the, mm -hmm. the Veda, yeah, Veda is. Uh, uh, a Sanskrit word which means knowledge mm -hmm. and uh, the the Veda is a set of teachings from many thousand years ago that speaks of itself as being the uh, the knowledge of or science of, of consciousness mm -hmm. well, what and I think I love the most about it is it's all-inclusive like there's yeah. no per the because yeah. because it speaks to the 
the thing that is shared by the whole of life. Yeah. You know, consciousness is the basis of life. And so when we speak something truth in consciousness, it resonates inside mm -hmm. of me, it resonates inside mm -hmm. of everyone. Yeah, so. yeah. One of the things, so Scott and I were, were lucky enough to, uh, lucky enough, we were um, happy to be a witness at your wedding mm -hmm. um, to Adele, mm. who we get to see playing tennis all the time now. She said, she <laughs> yeah. said you guys here every, she mentioned that this morning. Thursday and Friday. Um, and one of the things that I loved, and I don't remember which one of you said it to the other, was that you weren't going to be in love or fall in love with the other one's potential. Um, oh. Do you remember that? Yeah, was, yeah. I was like, what? That's brilliant. Because you were like, I'm falling in love with you. I love you as you are. It's not about what I think you can become yeah. or, or what you'll be in the future. It's the this first woman it. I've ever been with who actually has that perspective. Yeah. It doesn't mean she doesn't want me to get my hair cut. Right. You know? <laughs> but that's different. But yeah, she's, yeah. Not, she's not waiting for me to yeah. blossom into the true human I could be. Mm. You know, that's it. Dude, that is the setup. Late. We're a little late in that the is, game for that, that right? Is, well, that, that is, is the setup. setup. It's a bad, it's setup for failure, right? Okay. Like I, think, yeah. I tell my friends that, um, you know, you fall in love with somebody at that moment. You fall in love, not with what you think is going to happen in the future. And I think you're holding on to that. But it's, it's the hard not, part. It, but it's not just, it's not just a uh, romantic partner. It's life mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. If I'm looking at life, for what's not there, mm -hmm. or I'll be happy as soon as, mm -hmm. I'm missing the whole thing. Yeah. And I'm missing the only place where truth, happiness, love, life actually exists, which is here, not in comparison to anything, just here. Mm. So. Well, you that came through loud and clear. And um, just really quickly before we get to your only one, um, there are two meditations that I, I filed away and look at. I, I don't. You don't call them meditations, but I do. The the ones that you send out, um, the daily thoughts, and so one of them is suffering versus pain, mm. which I just think is so important that that pain is inevitable and that suffering is a choice. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, because suffering is inclusive of the story of why I'm in pain. It's, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just it's just mechanics. It's I get an uncomfortable sensation in my body and I don't want it so I call it pain and then my head simply starts running the story of how to get rid of it which m includes where it came from, why I deserve it, why that rat bastard deserves to be hurt because they caused it in me yeah. and all of this and that's suffering because I'm taking myself out of the place where you know, Pema Chodron talks about leaning into the discomfort. Mm -hmm. And when we start to know what spiritual work is actually about, by definition, it's about expanding our consciousness. Expanding our consciousness, by definition, is about feeling more. Mm -hmm. When I feel more, it's uncomfortable. Right. So actually, the discomfort of what we call pain is can almost always be a symbol of, or a, a, an expression of the fact that I'm growing, mm -hmm. that I'm expanding, that I'm becoming more of what I'm meant to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's uh, almost uh, amazing to think that it's a choice whether I suffer. Like I'm going to experience pain, but I have the ability to let go of the suffering. That's yeah. that's. Yeah. I think what place where people get stuck, and I think that explanation that came out in that we we go to it all the time because you don't want to ever denounce someone's pain. No, but you don't want to get into like you're the, the the meditation. I think includes a hole that somebody climbs down into, right? And they're asking you to come down and join in the suffering, and you're like, "Nah, dude, yeah. I'm all good. I'm gonna." <laughs> when you're ready to come out, I'll be right here. Yeah, I'm right here. And I, I love that yeah. the freedom that comes from that. Um, I think has saved me time and time again. Where I love people and I want to have empathy for them, but I don't want to get down in that hole anymore. And, and we want to, and, and we want to witness. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm witness for somebody that they're yeah. yeah it's I and and sometimes they don't want to hear anything about how to get out of it no. so you can actually always you, even with that you can go to I, I don't know how I could take it if I were you yeah I mm -hmm. don't know I don't know how whatever yep. you know that I, I don't know how you take it yeah it's so much do you do you have a uh, do you have a code word that uh, signals your uh, where we know each other from 
I no, but we could if you like. We have some mu <laughs> mutual friends. It's kind of we work. have mutual friends. That's what I always go with. Yeah. yeah. We do. Uh, that's been our code word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Community sometimes comes in, slips in. Like our community. Our like, community yeah. of like minded the rooms. Of like, yeah. In the rooms. Well, when we you say. said, I think when you said, um, we want to witness people's. Yeah. But our, our community is big. That's a big part of it. Is yeah, okay. we witness each witnessing other. each other. Yeah. yeah. So, with that, can you, can you finish the sentence for me? I am the only one in the room who. I am the only one in the room who is a cuckold. A cuckold. All right, and you're going to explain that in the story that you're going to tell us. But first, um, you were you're from Billings, Montana. Outside of Billings, I was okay. born in Billings, but yeah. Is Billings a big place? Well, relatively speaking, <laughs> yeah. it's the I don't know first or second largest city in Montana, okay. but the whole of Montana has like. Less than seven hundred thousand people, and it's a really large right? state. Yeah, it's a huge yeah. state. Billings huge is one hundred and nine thousand in yeah. two thousand seventeen. <laughs> wow. I have really dear friends uh, from there. I owned a hardware store. They born and raised there. Um, the Lances. Yeah. yeah. No, anyway, I, so, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one hundred nine thousand. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so you were a farmer there. I was. Yeah. Yeah, and until you were how? Old? Well, off and on. I mean, I left the first time when I was 18, mm -hmm. and then off and on, off and on until was I was 26. Was it a family farm? It was a family farm. Mm -hmm. my, yeah. uh, my relatives, my ancestors, uh, came over in the early 20th century, uh, landed in Galveston. They were from Russia, but they were Germans living in Russia. Mm -hmm. And they came over in 1907, one of them in 1911, another one of them landed in Galveston and then did migrant work up through the country to Minnesota and then across to Montana. And that was, it was like, that was the same uh, latitude as where they lived uh, in Europe. Oh, interesting. And so they grew, grew the same crops, yeah. and sugar beets and pinto beans and alfalfa, that sort of thing. Interesting. Yeah. So you, you were there till you were 18, you moved to LA then, when you moved away, or did you move somewhere well, I, else? I went to college a few times, I went to jail a little while. <laughs> um, I, oh, uh, where was that? That was Billings. That was in Billings? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. I that was, was I, as an adult? Adult-ish. Adult-ish, like yeah. around that same age? Like yeah, like 19. 19, 19 okay. Yeah, I was, you know, I, I yeah, I just, you know, possession with intent to distribute. Mm. I, I was a pothead, I was oh, a serious okay. pothead. He checked around the country. I worked in a carnival. Um, As what? I was selling corn dogs. Okay. We did the Southern Circuit, uh, like uh, uh, Fort Worth Stock Show, the Mardi Gras, mm -hmm. uh, the Jackson, Mississippi uh, Stock Show. Mm. The FBI came through, this was 1970. Five, the FBI came through our show in Jackson. We lost about half the people in the in the show. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they took them in. The, they, well, they either ran off or got arrested. Oh, yeah, that's they were. They, they were the, the draft was still on, so people were avoiding the draft. People mm. were wanted for all sorts of different things. Everyone in the carnival had two doctors in every town. One doctor they'd go to and say, "Doc, I just I can't get to sleep," and they'd give them some sleeping pills, and then oh. they'd go to another doctor and say, Doc, I got no energy. I don't know. I'm just, I, it's ah. just, I'm feeling down. And they would give him a bunch of bennies. And Isn't that interesting? Yeah, right. I used to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they Not traveled around, time, so they but, had yeah. several different, yeah. yeah. I, wow. I was an observer of all this. I right. They had never gotten involved. <laughs> so. And so, and, and you were a pothead then, but yeah. were, was that it? Were you not I, doing? I, I oh, no, I did whatever. Mm, you did whatever. I, Anything to make me feel differently than I felt. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Call that like the garbage can, right? The garbage can yes. approach yes. To, <laughs> to life. Yeah. yeah. What do you got? <laughs>